everyone how are you welcome back to my channel grade 11 today we are going to look at topography associated with massive igneous rocks and um, those who are new to the channel welcome to the channel and please subscribe and share our channel basically is about learning geography material from different topics so today we are going to look at topography associated with massive igneous rocks grade 11 this is not a new topic to you it is a topic that you also did in grade 10. Now, topography associated with igneous rocks. These are the igneous rocks. And basically, we are going to look at the igneous intrusions. Igneous intrusions where we have magma solidifying underneath the surfaces and then the rocks are exposed at a later surface. So as I was talking about massive igneous rocks, we have what are known as igneous extrusions and igneous intrusions. Igneous intrusive igneous rocks, they form underneath the within the crust when magma solidifies and will be later exposed to the earth's surfaces. Extrusive igneous rocks occur okay, when magma finds its way to the surfaces and then it solidifies to form igneous rocks. On the surfaces and we call that extrusive igneous rocks now what are the characteristic of these igneous rocks these igneous rocks because they are mainly formed from magma within the surface they contain so much minerals you know you remember magma is very rich in minerals so they contain so many minerals they have crystals and also because the magma solid when the magma solidifies it forms very hard rocks and as magma cools also and also because of expansion and contraction as they are exposed to the surfaces you find that these rocks have cracks and as a result they have joints within them so those are some of the characteristics of these igneous rocks i'm sure when i showed you these igneous rocks when i was showing you these are the cracks that we are talking about these are the joints that we are talking about so these are the igneous landforms that we are talking about when they expose onto the surfaces right so we are going to first look at the features of these massive igneous rocks these are the features of these massive igneous rocks when magma solidifies under the surfaces it it also forms um, some features we have one a mushroom shape which is called the color colic we have two we have two this one is a dike we also have three the biggest of the intrusive landforms which is called the batholith we also have four vertical intrusions these ones which are also ducks it's the same as two and four horizontal intrusions that occur the number five is the sill and then lastly we have the saucer shaped the social the saucer shaped landform which we call the lopolith now we are going to look at these landforms in detail grade 11. now a batholith is the biggest of them all as i said and the type of rock which is which it is mainly formed from it mainly forms the granite rock it mainly consists of the granite rock and it is also formed inside the earth's crust and when it reaches the surfaces it becomes what we call the granite domes and this is the largest of them all the batholith and this batholith looks like this feature when it is still under the surfaces this the largest one of them all that one is the batholith when exposed to the surface it becomes a dome the second of them again is a um, melancholith which i already mentioned and i said is a mushroom shaped um platform it is formed in the earth's crust when magma is moved to the surfaces especially intruded layers of the sedimentary rocks and it solidifies there so sedimentary rocks 
tend to bend upwards and then they form this dome intrusion. So when it is exposed to the surface also, it becomes a dome. This is the lacolith that we are talking about, a mushroom shaped. So the difference between the lacolith and the batolith, it is that it is a smaller in size. The batolith is the largest of the landforms. The lopolith, the lopolith is the one that we said it is saucer shaped. And magma intrudes the layers of the sedimentary rocks. So when the layers cannot bear pressure, the floor collapses, forming shallow intrusions. And these shallow intrusions look like the saucer-like shape, which we call the lopolith. So this is an example of a lopolith, a saucer-shaped landform. Then the dike. Dikes are vertical intrusions. When magma moves vertically, especially through the cracks of the rocks, the dikes are formed. And some of the time, when these dikes are formed, when they reach the surfaces, at times they are exposed as the, the hoaxbacks. And these are the dikes that we are talking about. They are vertical inclusions there. And most of the time, they form the dolerite rock. This is an example of a, a dike in the real world. Right, we also have what are called the seals. They are different from the dikes because these ones are horizontal layers of sedimentary rocks. So these ones okay as intrusions between horizontal layers of sedimentary rocks to form these seals. And this is basically what you are talking about, the horizontal layers. These are the seals. And in real life, they okay, as you can see there in the diagram. Then... Whenever we talk about massive igneous rocks, we also talk about the tours. What, how do they come about these tours? Development of tours starts with igneous rocks cooling down underneath the surfaces. And as it cools down, it will crack. To, as, a, as an igneous rock is cooling, it is going to crack. And when it cracks, it forms what we call the rock joints. And as water starts to seep in through those joints, these joints, they start to break up. So the groundwater, how does the rock break up? It breaks up because when groundwater gets into the joints, it dissolves some minerals through what we call chemical weathering. More cracks form, and when they form, erosion takes when these cracks form, they widen the joints, forming core stones that will remain. And with the continuous erosion, these core, these um, tours are going to be exposed onto the earth surface. So it starts underground when magma is cooling, as I was saying. As it cools, cracks are formed, which forms the rock joints. And it is along these rock joints where groundwater seeps into the joints expands the cracks by dissolving minerals and as it expands the cracks and develop, um, dissolves the minerals it forms large core stones on top of the dome and as with continuous continuous chemical weathering taking place we will have more and more piling up of these core stones and we the tour is formed and as the chemical weathering is taking place underground we are also going to have, be having erosion, which is going to be exposing the dome or the tor as it is forming. Um, and then the, the landform is exposed to the surface. And then this dome with piles of core stones is formed. And that is what we call the tors. An example of the tors in the real world, these are these ones that have been broken down 
as a result of continuous weathering. They've been exposed to the surfaces by erosion. These are also tours, also large piles of tours, which are so beautiful that have been also be exposed as a result of erosion. And utilization of these tours mainly, as you can see, because they are beautiful, they can act as tourist attractions. Thank you so much, boys and girls, for watching. Those who are new, please subscribe and share. I'll see you in my next video. Thanks and bye.